Bro, I am so tired of the WNBA already. And it's only been a few months since it kind of rose into the national conversation here. Uh, once Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese entered into the WNBA, there's been a big rivalry discussion. There's elements of race conversation and all of it. And I frankly don't care about any of that. And my problem with the WNBA is not inherently the WNBA. I don't have an issue with women's sports. I think it's dope. I occasionally watch some stuff here and there. I'm not a big sports person overall anyway anymore. I fell out of love with sports and in the modern day sports and how it's turned into. And that could be a conversation for a totally different video. But what I'm specifically getting bothered by um, in the conversation around the WNBA it revolves around this. Let, let's start from the beginning here. This is an article uh, talking about Angel Reese written here. She's a uh, place for my hometown team here, Chicago Sky and everything. So she's in Chicago now. So salute to her. Congrats and everything. This is from the Chicago Sun Times. Says uh, Angel Reese doesn't feel like talking and that's okay. Is she okay? That's the question here. Let me scroll down to a part where they talk about how they're asking her questions. And she says, I'm good. So, you know, she's given the very short uh short answers right very reminiscent of like when you ask your girl yo baby are you are you okay what's wrong i'm good we all know what we all know what i'm good ain't really i'm good so it goes on to say they're asking her questions uh and she says and i quote i know how y'all like to twist my words so i'm just keeping it short and sweet i can't trust any of y'all so I'm just letting you know, short and sweet. And then we get to this tweet right here, which it really embodies what I see is the growing problem that no one's really talking about with the WNBA and specifically with its female athletes uh, that are a part of it. Let me read it for you. It says, I don't blame Rain Angel Reese one bit for not wanting to speak to the media anymore. She's uh, tweeting this in relation to that article. Y'all claim it's only Cl Caitlin Clark growing the game anyways. Why do you want to interview Reese? She needs to protect her own mental health and the media spinning every single thing she says to make it sound like an attack on Caitlin Clark just ain't it. I wouldn't blame her one bit uh, to only give one word answers the rest of the season just to make sure she isn't fine for not interacting with the media. Or if I was her, I'd just pay the fine outright and not say another word to y'all. This is what Kathy Engelbert and the WNBA has let the league and media get to by not protecting all players. Now, this tweet perfectly captures what the problem is and is going to be as we see this influx of women getting into the WNBA as fans, which is great. Don't get me wrong. It's great that they're getting into it. That was a big hope for the WNBA as Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese came into the fold. Big followings. There's a big rivalry. There's a whole dynamic there, and it's very deep and complex. But I just want to focus on this aspect of these new fans coming in. You're seeing a lot of women coming in that previously were not invested into sports, not nearly in the same degree as a man is uh, in the sports, right? You know, a lot of men got their fantasy football teams, their fantasy leagues. Uh, they're going to the games. They're following the stats. They're they're in these barbershops uh, talking about who the GOAT is and all of that, right? They're, they're in the trenches of sports in the conversation and consumption of it all throughout the day. And they got their entire Madden team filled <laughs> with their favorite players to stack them all up and everything. You, you see what I'm saying here? That's not the same for a lot of these women that are coming into the WNBA as fans. They're coming into it without any knowledge of like how professional sports works in particularly how the dynamic between the professional athlete and the media works see it's not always meant to be kosher it's a lot of times going to be friction we all know it we see when lebron has to sit there in front of these media you see in his face he don't want to be there but guess what he's fulfilling his oblig his contra uh, contractual obligations to sit there and answer the media's questions now how he responds to those questions he has free range to do that some days he'll have some fun and, and clown and joke other days he's got the straight face mafia look on him you could tell he don't want to be there he's got the death stare looking at them when they ask him a question he don't want to address he just like we can see the vibe now to say that all of a sudden because these are women in the WNBA professionals that they need protection a certain level of protection uh from the media to preserve their mental health is wild now now we're starting to get into if they need protection then why are we not then saying that the the men in sports need protection for their mental health and for uh and from the media that's not how it works see the thing is 
there's a lot of coddling going on right now that I have seen more broadly in the conversation with the WNBA players. It, like, they are professionals. This is part of what comes with being at this level. It's been like this for every other male sport. Why would it be different for the WNBA? Why should Angel Reese get any preferential treatment? Same as Caitlin Clark. This is what they are supposed to do. You go out, you perform as best you can, whether you win or you lose or you didn't have a good game, you go back to the post-game conference and you speak on it because people want to hear from these athletes uh, these kinds of questions. You know, wh why why didn't you play well today? What do, you, what do you think could have been better? You know, how do you think you're going to approach your next game? People are in, in, interested and invested with these uh, athletes to want to know these things, which is what the media is there to do. Hopefully not. And, and don't get me wrong. They don't, they're not always great. They're not always perfect, but that's what the dynamic is supposed to be. So what we're seeing here is this trend of trying to make a special case for the WNBA because they're women. They got to be coddled and protected from the same things that their male counterparts go through and have been going through for decades that no one has batted an eye on. So what are we really talking about here? In my opinion, it just needs to be the way it is. If Angel Reese don't want to talk at the conference, she's well within her right. God bless her. I'm not even mad that she gave him the short, uh, short and sweet answers. She didn't want to be there, but she was there to fulfill her obligation. And because of that, she checked off the, the checkbox. She's not required to give in-depth answers and all that stuff. We don't need to baby these professional athletes, women, in their own sport. This is part of the game. It's not always the, the best part of the game. It's not always the prettiest part of the game, but it is part of the game. You see, that is why I said at the beginning of this video, why I'm getting tired of the WNBA. Sports is about the stats, the wins, the losses, the performance, and that is what you base the conversation around. And yet, Everything that I've seen around the WNBA flying through my timeline on social media has been everything but those things. Asia Wilson, she's killing it. Absolutely monster year putting up these numbers, and yet you barely see anything about that. You know what else? You know what I do see? I see a lot of conversations about the drama around the WNBA. I mean, at this point, just remove the W and put a D in front of it for drama because that's all I ever see. I rarely see anything about the WNBA that is about the actual game on the court. And it's more about the uh, storylines behind the scenes and the microaggressions of so-and-so and this and deep dives into that. Like, what's happening here? I hope we don't lose the plot point of what the WNBA should be about. It should be about these women who are performing at a high level that are entertaining an audience that are welcoming in new people into the sport so they can grow. I think that's what should be the highlight of it all. And yet everything that I see tends to be everything but that. And it's scary because I hope that with these new influx of fans, they don't inadvertently detract from what the WNBA is trying to do. And when you have comments like this, where we're talking about they need to be protected and their mental health. No, they don't. They are grown women, professional athletes. They have a team, they have media coaches, they have media personnel that will help them get through all this stuff. Don't coddle them. Don't take away their sense of agency as a woman and as a professional athlete. They will be okay. It's no different than what the men go through. We need to stop trying to make the game different for them versus what... Like, they will be fine, all right? I just hope that this whole conversation changes because I'm just tired of scrolling through Twitter and it's, again, the conversations around the drama around the players and it's not about the sport and the performance of the players. That's what I think. Let me know what you guys think down below. Appreciate y'all for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe. See you guys in the next.